Hi and welcome to my take on WWDC 17 and what's coming next for us developers. I still have a lot to learn myself about all the new possibilities, but let's have a look at several key frameworks and features. First, CoreML. Making machine learning easily adoptable for our developers is extremely cool. For example, what we get is face tracking, face detection, uh, text detection, rectangle detection, barcode detection, and so much more, and I really love that. And what I think is even cooler is that Apple, again, has a strong focus on privacy. CoreML is for on-device processing, which means that the data that developers, we developers use to improve our user's experience won't leave the user's devices, and that's really great. And another key framework that Apple announced was ARKit, which is a new framework that allows you to easily create augmented reality experiences for iPhone and iPad. And this works together with Metal, SceneKit, and SpriteKit. And the basic requirement for this AR experience, and also the defining feature of ARKit, is the ability to create and track a correspondence between the real world space the user inhabits and a virtual space where you can model visual content. And to create such a correspondence between real and virtual space, ARKit uses a technique called visual inertial odometry. And this process combines information from the iOS device's motion sensing hardware with computer vision analysis of the scene visible to the device's camera. And another framework that was improved is SiriKit, which also has some exciting new features. Now it comes with additional intents, for example, for lists and notes, which lets you create and manage notes and to-do list items or intents to search for and display photos. And one of my personal highlights is definitely the new multitasking feature for iPad. I was hoping to get that for the last two years and now we finally have it available in the operating system and for third-party developers. And this is all really exciting and I really want to help you get all of that integrated into your apps. So I'm very happy to announce there is going to be a Swift Tutorial Conference 2017. STC 2016 is again a free online conference with a focus on example-based tutorials. It's going to take place in September and you can now help to form the conference schedule. Just visit our website, swifttutorialconference.net. You will find a link in the video description below and you can both help us improve or help us schedule the conference and what topics should be covered. And you can also register for free at the bottom of the website. And I hope that we can continue our success from last year where over a thousand people attended online. And now that being said, I now like to show you a few of my highlights in Xcode 9, which I'm sure you're also going to like. So let's bring up the first beta of Xcode 9. Now, this is Xcode 9, and at a first glance, it doesn't look very different to what we already know. But the first cool thing is that this is a project we created in the last tutorial, which was a weather application. And without doing any changes here, of course, I updated to the newest project settings, but without any changes, I could just build and run that, and nothing. there was nothing I needed to do. Because you can run both Swift 3 and Swift 4 code, um, because it runs with the same compiler and there are no problems, at least for this project. And you can migrate from Swift 3 to Swift 4 at your own pace. This is really cool. Also, Apple rewrote the complete editor here. It now scrolls a lot smoother. Um, it doesn't matter how large your file is. This is also very great. But now let's have a look at some features that you can really see are different. First of all, let's have a look at the simulator. As you can see, I can have two instances of the simulator. And again, we have a real device around our screen as we had until I think iPhone 5 or iPhone 6. 
when we had just a window. Now we have a fully functioning iPhone here, which means that I can indeed press this button, for example, but I can also press, and let me just move that to the side here though, so that you can see it better. I can also press the mute switch. I can uh, use the volume settings and I can also use the power button, which really turns the device off and I can restart and press the home button to launch the iPhone again. So so we can have two different instances or even multiple different instances of the simulator, pretty cool, but something else is really amazing. And this is something that you can only appreciate if you want to test um, your apps on a real device because you can now cut the cord. You do no longer need to connect your iPhone or iPad to your Mac in order to run something on this device. And the way you do that is that in the device manager, so just hit window and open up the devices and simulators manager and this gets you this screen and as you can see there is a little checkbox here which says connect via network and if you hit that button then you can just build and run your applications and they will be transferred and installed on your device without just uh, uh, connecting a cord. So my device is not connected, but the development iPhone is connected here as a device. And as you can see, there is this little uh, globe here. This icon indicates that we have a an established connection. And this is just amazing. So one other cool feature that is has been missed in Swift or has been missing in Swift is refractoring. And what we can do here, for example, is let me just go into another view controller here. And let's say we want to rename this property here, which is forecast data. And we want to rename that to forecast area, for example. So I can select that uh, property, right click it, hit rename. And then we get, we get this great view here where we see every occurrence of this property and we can just just hit, um, hit some keys here, call it um, weather data array, for example, and then we can rename that and that change is instantly applied everywhere um, this property was mentioned in your code. So this is amazing. Finally, we have that for Swift. And of course, it works for Object Objective-C too. And just one other example, imagine that you wrote some lines of code and you now notice it would be better fitted in their own function. So for example, these two lines, we set a delegate and we call this update weather function, uh, weather for location function. And this would be cool if they, if these two lines were in their own setup function. So what I can do is just select them and right click and tell it to extract this method. And then we get our extracted function right here on top of that. And it's called this extracted function, but what we can do now, of course, is right click or select our function name here, right click it, hit rename, and I could just call it setup and make this change, hit rename, and we renamed our function. Isn't that cool? Finally available for Swift. And then there is one other highlight that I'd like to share with you, which is colors in the assets folder. So here in the assets folder, we have all of our assets that are necessary for our app. But now what you can do is also define colors here. So I right click and I say new color set. And I could, for example, name that text color. And just in the attributes inspector, I can select this color and give it maybe a nice red color and this is now a text color for me and I can define all of the colors that I use in my app here in the assets folder and it works pretty similar to what you expect for images so let me just scroll down here for a second and maybe use self row at index path here as a function I'm reconfiguring the text labels text font color so I'm using cell text label and it's text color and I'm using the UI color function or the UI color class. And as you can see here, if I scroll down a little bit, we have now a named um, initializer here where I can just type in the name of my, uh, of my color, which is text color here. And I can build that works nicely. Also build times have decreased, um, I guess, um, at least it feels that way. And then I can run this in the simulator. So let's open it up. It's going to run in the iPhone SE simulator. And as you can see now, I have my red 
color as a text color for my cell. So these are just a few highlights. I'm sure there are many more things to come as uh, we all use Xcode 9 and as the beta versions advance and everything runs even more smoothly. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to have a look at Swift Tutorial Conference. Um, the link for the conference is in the video description below. Um, tell us what you'd like to see in the conference. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.